Evacuation is the most critical and time-consuming step when installing, repairing, and servicing refrigeration systems. Although vacuum is an exact science, at times it can be difficult to both understand and explain. In this fast evacuation series, we will cover fundamentals of vacuum, the importance of testing your tools, the importance of vacuum pump oil, how to maximize a full flow setup, and how to diagnose a successful evacuation. This series will demystify the science behind vacuum, while in turn assisting you in performing quality evacuations faster than you previously thought possible. To start, we should take a moment to understand what vacuum is. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSIA, or absolute, created by the gravitational effect on the Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure will reduce as altitude increases. Sometimes vacuum is described as a negative pressure, which isn't entirely true. Vacuum is still a positive pressure, above zero PSIA, but because it is below atmospheric pressure, we conceive it as a negative pressure. But why is vacuum so important when servicing refrigeration systems? Refrigeration systems are very complex, using mechanical and electronic components to move a heat transferring medium, or refrigerant, to achieve a multitude of different outcomes. Whether it is for comfort cooling and heating, process cooling, food preservation, or another role, they all rely on the same process, heat being absorbed in the low side of the system and rejected on the high side. Regardless of the intended outcome, the efficiency of this process and the longevity of the components rely on the initial installation and further servicing being carried out to the highest standards, the most critical process being evacuation. Evacuation of a refrigeration system is the degassing and dehydration of a hermetic system that is designed to operate with nothing other than refrigerant and compressor oil. When other elements exist in the system, it is no longer able to operate as designed, and inefficiencies and failure will ensue. The degassing of a system is the removal of the air that has entered the system during insulation or repairs. This air is considered to be a non-condensable. If not removed, it will simply result in high head pressures and reduced unit efficiency. The reduced efficiency and additional strain placed on the components will result in excess energy consumption and premature failure. Degassing is relatively easy and happens in the early stages of the evacuation. But what's left behind can pose more of an issue. Moisture can be present in both a visible and invisible form. The air we breathe contains moisture. Depending on the relative humidity of the day, there will be varying degrees of moisture left in the system after the degassing process has been completed. In more extreme cases, water may have entered the system during installation or service, or due to failure of refrigerant to water heat exchangers on either the high or low side of the system. Both refrigerant and compressor oil are hydroscopic meaning moisture is absorbed quickly. As refrigerant circulates through the system, the moisture will freeze in components such as the expansion valve, causing blockages. It will also reduce the heat exchanger's capacity to absorb and reject heat, reducing system efficiency. As the refrigerant enters the compressor, it carries moisture which mixes with the compressor oil. This will negatively affect the oil, altering its viscosity and lubrication capabilities. This turns the oil into a sludge that can build up and block strainers, valves, capillary tubes, and other components. Hydrolysis causes an acid to begin forming. When the acid is introduced to the heat of compression, this process accelerates. Now there is an acid traveling through the system, causing corrosion and stripping copper from the components and tubing. The copper, acid, and sludge make their way back to the compressor where copper plating on the crankshaft journals occurs, causing the compressor to draw more power. 
The motor will run hotter, and in the case of hermetic and semi-hermetic compressors, the acid will start eating away at the varnish on the motor windings. Now the race is on to see how the unit will fail first. From a refrigerant leak caused by copper etching, or will the compressor fail mechanically or electronically? These issues are why the dehydration process of evacuation is so important. Dehydration is the removal of moisture from a refrigeration system. This process is the fundamental reason why pulling a system into a vacuum is so necessary. As we pull a deeper and deeper vacuum, what we're actually doing is lowering the system's internal pressure, thus lowering the boiling point of water. The goal of a deep vacuum is to pull it deep enough that the boiling point inside the system is the same or lower than the ambient temperature outside of the system. The ambient temperature will then be hot enough to evaporate any liquid moisture, which will be evacuated through the pump. If there's a high level of moisture in the system, it will freeze before it can be removed as vapor. Fortunately, ice will sublimate which means it can change state from a solid directly to a vapor. Increasing the vacuum in the system will further reduce the boiling point, aiding in this process. With a proper understanding of degassing and dehydration, you are now ready to learn how to increase the speed and quality of your evacuation through the following videos in the Fast Evacuation Series.